Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Creator of all good things, we, your children, humbly bow before you this evening as we worship and adore you. We praise you for the wonder and beauty of this universe, for your creation, and we stand in awe before your presence, acknowledging that you are worthy of our worship, praise, and adoration. Father, we come before you knowing that we have nothing to bring that makes us worthy of your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we are miserable sinners and therefore depend on your forgiveness. Lord, forgive us for the sins we have committed against you and our fellow men and women. Forgive us for the way we tear our own lives apart because of idolatry, selfishness, anger, hatred, the pursuit of pleasure and material things. Father, forgive us for the lost opportunities to serve you by serving others. Help us, Lord, to overcome selfishness, and may we always seek to please you by doing your will and keeping all your commandments. Lord, we thank you for forgiveness freely given. We also give thanks for our health, food, clothing, and shelter, and for our dear family members and our friends. Above all, O oh Father, we give thanks to thee for Jesus Christ, your Son, who died on Calvary's cross to save us and who is now our friend and guide. O oh God, empower us to walk closely with Jesus, to learn of him and to be like him, so that we may be able to lead others to him. Almighty God, hear our prayers for those who are ill and need your strength as they face yet another round of treatments and therapies. For those who feel the pangs of grief and loss, 
for those who fear the loss of job and income, and for all who suffer as a result of natural or man-made disasters throughout your world. Lord, have mercy on your people everywhere and provide for their needs. Heavenly Father, bless all countries in the world and save them from violence, discord, and corruption. Touch our leaders, Lord, so that they may recognize that all power comes from you and that you are a God of justice, love, and mercy who is in complete control of this world. Heavenly Father, breathe upon us this evening your hallowed calm. Lift the burdens from our hearts, soothe the anxieties of our minds, and send your peace upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. For tonight's reflection is taken from Luke chapter 24, and I'll be reading verse 13 through 31. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, 
And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. This is the Gospel of Christ. Tonight's reflection is entitled, Come Alongside. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us in this time of reflection. I ask now that you would speak through me, your servant, so that the words I speak will be your words. May all those who hear, O oh God, your word be renewed in spirit. For I pray in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke's gospel is filled with movement. Theologians suggest that the re reason for this is that Luke viewed the Christian faith as a journey. And so today's text that was read bears this out. For we see the two disciples 
Cleopas and his unnamed companion walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a distance of about seven miles. The two disciples left Jerusalem after hearing the resurrection news, after the women had shared their encounter with the angels at the empty tomb. These men, who had been among those who had gathered behind closed doors, ventured out to return to their village. These men made the decision to go back home, to go back to familiar spaces and faces, to the life they had left behind to follow Jesus. You see, Jerusalem was no longer safe, and they were trying to put as much distance between themselves and the city where all these things had happened. These men were trying to find normal again. I imagine that the two men were planning to go back to their former occupations, to former relationships, to reunite with family and friends in an attempt to try to pick up where they left off. As they journeyed, they could not shake the events that had traumatized them. You see, we may physically run away, but we cannot unsee and unhear the events that have taken place. And as they walked along, they tried to make sense of the bizarre events that had occurred. The betrayal, arrest, trial, and execution of Jesus must have left them with many questions. And to hear of the empty tomb just compounded their confusion. I can only imagine the shock they had experienced. And as they moved further away from Jerusalem, the shock must have given way to pain and sadness. These men were in despair and they were confused because apart from losing their teacher, they were also grieving lost hopes and dreams. In fact, they said that they had hoped that Jesus would redeem Israel from oppression and, and, and hardship and suffering. So evident was their disappointment and sorrow that the writer noted that they stood still with their faces downcast. These two men were having a difficult time. They were struggling. It is at this difficult time that Jesus comes alongside them and walks with them. And he sees their pain and their struggle to make sense of his death and the news of his resurrection. And this prompts him to ask, what are you discussing? Beloved, these two men represent some of us today. We are having a difficult time trying to process all the things that are taking place simultaneously as we journey through life. Some of us are trying to return to normal, to the familiar, when the truth is we are further away from normal than we have ever been and may never return to normal. We are trying to make sense of our world post pandemic. We are trying to make sense of all the chaos that the pandemic brought to our lives, the deaths and the illnesses and the disruption of life as we knew it to mask or not to mask, the endless testing and the financial hardships and the job losses. All these things have led to an increase in our struggles. Added to all of the above, there's an increase in crime. And if you live in the North, North America, we have seen an increase in gun violence in every major city. 
And compounding all of that is the war involving Russia and Ukraine. The text tells us that Jesus came near and went with them. He came near, he came alongside them, and he walked with them. In this walk, he recognized their need, and he, uh, he helped them to process what they were feeling and thinking. We too need help processing. We need someone to come alongside us to help us to process. We need God to come alongside us and walk with us and help us. Beloved, whenever I've experienced a difficult time, it was God and the people that God placed in my life that helped me process that helped me through the challenge. And so I know firsthand that when people are struggling, that's what they need. And we've seen the text bear that out. When God comes alongside us and he walks with us and talks with us, he does not abandon us mid-journey. He goes the distance. Whatever the situation we face, know this, that God is with you. Sometimes it takes for us to turn our eyes and look to God. Because many times we are like the disciples. We are kept from recognizing God in our midst. Sometimes the very challenge overshadows us and and obscures our vision and prevent us from seeing that God is with us. So today I say to us, whatever the situation, know that God is with us. Just turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus and tell him all about your struggles. Jesus asked the question, what are you discussing? while you walk along. And the disciples responded with another question. Are you the only stranger who does not know the things that took place? And Jesus asked a follow-up question. What things? By asking these questions, Jesus not only created a space for the disciples to share what was on their hearts, he listened. It was an opportunity for him to listen and he listened well and they did share. They were able to tell him all the things that had happened and they were able to not only share but receive from Jesus the clarity they needed. After listening to them, Jesus redirected them to the scriptures and all the prophecies about himself and in 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 that time and that space he was able to explain to them beginning from Moses and all the prophets and interpreted to them the things about himself brothers and sisters in order for us to be an effective and relevant church to the community in this era, the church of Jesus Christ, of which we are a part, has to be able to come alongside those who are having a difficult time. And we have to walk with them. We have to listen to their stories and point them toward the word of God that is relevant to their experience. That's what Jesus did. But to point them to the word that is relevant, we all have to know the word for ourselves. We have got to, to be able to know and to apply it to the context that they face. We have to be serious about knowing the word, about immersing ourselves in the word, the scriptures, 
so that we can point others in the direction of the scriptures so that they may be guided. Scripture is still one of the pillars for theological reflection. It is in scripture we see God's love on display for all generations. It is through reading the word that we hear words of hope that inspire us and encourage us and offer comfort to us. It is through the word that lives are transformed. And so, if we are disciples of Jesus Christ, we are expected to do as Jesus did. And as I close, I say that when we are struggling to make sense of life, we must remember that God comes alongside us in those moments and that he helps us get through the situation. And that makes a world of difference. And so if God does that for us, we must be ready and willing to do it for others. We must come alongside them and help them to make sense of their situations. When we do that, they catch a glimpse of the love of God for them. That is the love that is the key that will open their hearts so that God can enter and commune with them. This text, my friends, is calling the church to be in relationship with those who are struggling. I pray that this text will inspire us to walk with those who are hurting. I hope we will ask the right questions and listen really well to what they are sharing with us and then share God's word of hope as it relates to their context. Amen. Have you heard? As part of our outreach ministry, we are creating a performing arts academy in the Heard Memorial Building across the street from our chapel. Please join us in the Heard Memorial Cleanup Day on Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. as we start the transformation process of turning this building into a space for the development of performing arts for our community, our members, and across the length and breadth of Barbados. Come and lend a hand. If you are unable to lift, climb, sweep, or scrub, perhaps you can consider offering moral support by holding a ladder or providing some form of refreshment as we begin this exciting journey to making a positive mark on the artistic landscape of our island. Our future begins now. Thank you.
pray. Lord God, thank you for coming alongside and journeying with us. Thank you, O oh God, for being with us and, and, and showing us your word of hope and love and comfort. Grant us the wisdom to recognize those who are struggling and the grace and compassion to journey with them in their time of need. We pray that they would see your love reflected in all that we say and do. It is with thanksgiving that I pray. And may all God's people say, Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.